Hello everyone. A few days ago I recorded a small video um, on my way home from a meeting with a friend who is whose church is going through uh, John Piper's book on Providence. And I had recorded some thoughts on that book, but the main thought that I wanted to make a video about after reading that, a little bit of a couple pieces from that book, was does a belief in Calvinist, Calvinistic or Reformed theology um, lead to a different understanding of the love of God? And second, what are the practical ramifications of a more Reformed, or for that matter, any theology that does not al allow or believe in a doctrine of eternal security through a assurance of salvation view where I know I'm going to heaven, I can know that today, um, and there's no there's no proofing in works. What does a belief or not belief in those those respective doctrines lead to, in, in from from a counseling perspective, and um, and and peace and, and joy in, in the Christian life? So, the first thing I want to say before getting into this again, I have many friends, pastors, um, you know, people I went to school with who are reformed. And they do subscribe to a more Calvinist line of theology. And this is meant not to argue or to create frustration. If it, if it puts pebbles in your shoes, then so be it. I do that in love, right? To make you maybe a little uncomfortable, maybe to get you to think about some things. Challenge the worldview um, or some theological points. But I'm, what, what I'm doing is I'm seeking truth. I also want to say, believing something, whether you believe something is not whether you like it or don't like it. That doesn't. That shouldn't impact whether you believe something or not, right? So I dislike Calvinistic thought because the idea that God elects people to heaven or hell that doesn't seem to sit right with me. It doesn't seem just. And I've well, who are you to to judge? Um, and like, and I'm, I think of my friends who would always quote Romans and or the, the clay and the, the potter. And I actually don't think that that's uh, election to. It's in talking about salvation. I think it's a, an election to service, as many discuss in other camps. Um, but regardless, what I'm saying is, is that it never, never sat well with me this theology. But whether I like something or not, right? Like eternal security, the fact that I know I will see Jesus one day and be with Him forever, that makes me very happy and joyous. That's the ramification of that belief. I like that. But those two things, I you don't believe something just because you like it, right? I don't like that. Uh, you know, or I wouldn't say I don't like it. I actually do like it. But, you know, Hebrews 12 talks about God disciplining us for our good. I actually do like that. But there's probably many people who don't like that. Like, I don't want to be disciplined if I, you know, do bad by God. Well, God loves you and he's disciplining you. So it's actually a good thing. But what I'm saying is, is uh, whether you like something or not, it does not dictate whether you believe it. You believe something because it is true through your hermeneutical investigation, which is Bible study method, your interpretation, and whether it lines up with Scripture. So it's it, it's based on whether it's true. Is why you believe something, not whether you like it or not. So I just wanted to put that out there as, as kind of a, a beginning um, note. And then also, I'm not going to be arguing or you know trying to prove which is right. What the purpose of this video is to discuss how a doctrinal belief in either you know Reformed thought, Calvinistic thought. So I want to talk about some of the ramifications of that belief system. One of them is the belief I can't fail. Apologies. I can't fail. And so, you know, I was talking to a pastor, and he, he told me, remember, you can't fail. God is providentially in control of everything. And I, and I, think, of, I think to myself, I think of um, the, 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 I think it's the mood of um, possibility in, in the New Testament where you should do something. You, you know, in Romans, it talks about that you should have, you know, walk in newness of life, or you should... Um, Put to death the deeds of the body, I should say, is what it says. You should, right? It's not guaranteed. Um, I think of the Bema Sea Judgment, 1 Corinthians 3, where it talks about wood, hands, double, gold, precious jewels, where there is a, a judgment of our works um, at the Bema Sea Judgment of Christ. So there's a, there's a degree of, of, of reward or not reward. And so some people have a presupposition that all these things are providentially controlled in the backdrop, and there's really no choice in the matter at all, and God's just kind of judging things that he already... In place, but when I see these these imperative moods, like or Ephesians uh, two at, at the end says, you know, "God has prepared good works for us that we might or should walk in them." Right. So, so there's there's a possibility there. 
and I think it's dishonest with the text to ignore that that God is giving. There's a there's a there's an option there. Um, second thing is, I was actually speaking with uh, Dennis Roxer. I've mentioned um, I may have mentioned him before. He's a pastor um, at Duluth Bible Church in Georgia, and he was telling me, you know, that people who do not have a free grace perspective, they will call him suicidal in, in, in a suicidal state because they can't overcome sin in their lives and they're questioning their salvation because of reformed and Calvinistic thought and their theology and perseverance of the saints. There's, there's this, I can't overcome sin because they're trying to do it in the flesh and they're not doing it through the Romans 6, 7, and 8 approach, which is what I've been studying these, these la this last month, and that's where freedom is. It's not by obeying, it's by trusting, yielding, and obedience comes through that. It's, it's you know you don't start in the flesh you, you, you trust Christ and through his holy spirit you yield to him it's really a yielded dependence moment by moment that is how victory over sin is accomplished it's not through just trying harder and i've tried that my whole life it doesn't work um i mean you get to you you actually do get some you might get behavior change but you actually don't deal with the sin nature right you might deal with the sin action you won't deal with the sin nature um, because it's not something you can fix it's something god has to fix god has a plan to, to fix it so um so, so that effect in counseling is, is very, you know, from a pastoral point of view, he, he was sharing, you know, this is very detrimental that um, people who don't have an assurance of salvation, they, you know, some people just want to kill themselves. Like they reach the end of the road. And I can't say that I, I, I would say there have been seasons in my life where I've gotten, you know, I've, those, those thoughts have entered my mind, right? Where I have wrestled with sins and I'm like, God, like, how do you overcome this? How, I've begged, pleaded, pounded the dirt, become ascetic, you know tried to do everything you know and it's not those things it's simple yielded dependence on god and he just does the work in your heart you wake up in the morning you say god i present myself to you god in this moment i present god i yield to you in this moment god i'm feeling tempted i yield to you in this moment that's it it's trusting him in that way i'm just giving you examples of what i might say um but so i want to talk about that but i also want to talk about love um from a Calvinistic view, you know, I, I remember thinking, I think it was John Piper, I can't remember, but one of these, one of these more reformed teachers was, was sharing, you know, if God elects my children to hell, who am I to say otherwise? You know, I can love them, I can beg, but, and so his, his argument, so I, I was reading in, in Providence, John Piper's book, where he talks about, um, if, you know, God's desires for all to be saved, but he doesn't grant them all repentance. So he's like, well, why does he do that? You know, how, how can it say here he wants everyone to be saved, but he doesn't grant? And so his argument is God has a desire here to, for everyone to be saved, but he doesn't desire it enough to grant them repentance. And then he quotes um, Ezekiel, I think, where it says God um, God does not delight in the death of the wicked. And then he goes to Deuteronomy and says, um, I will, to, to Israel, where he's saying, uh, I will delight, as I delighted blessing you, I will delight in bringing ruin upon you. And he's talking to Israel. And so he says, that doesn't make sense either. So, you know, we just hold the complexity. I don't think that's accurate. I really don't. We're dealing with, so God does not delight in the death of the wicked, but we also see here that God is dealing with his covenant people and he's bringing consequences on them for their actions. And he's delighting in that. Why would God delight in something bad, ruin of a people? And I was reading a little article on this that someone, someone found, because I asked this question and they said, as a parent, when I administer a consequence and it sticks, I, I delight in that. You know, I don't, I don't want to destroy my child, but I want them to get it. I want them to understand. So I thought that was an interesting where that, that verse is in the context of a covenant, of a relationship of discipline. So I think that that's a key to that also. And I think that that nullifies his point, which is that, um, God desires all to be saved, but he doesn't grant everyone repentance. Number one, I challenge his understanding of maybe those repentance, understanding those repentance passages. Again, we're not getting into all that. This is just some preliminary thoughts, but the thought is, is that, um, God doesn't grant my children repentance, they go to hell. And we were, me and a friend of mine were reading at the end of Revelation, the lake of fire. And I was like, this is, this is terrible. I never want anyone to go here. I would never want this. I mean, it's made, for, some have said, you know, this, hell is made for Satan and his angels, not for humanity. Um, and so my, my thought was, if you, if, if, you know, God loves because he first loved us. If, if, if I am loving because of the love that God has, but God's love is an inferior love that does not take the necessary steps of action to provide a meaningful, practical way of salvation for every man, woman, and child, what does that do your, to your thought process? So not only do you have, you do not have, I can, someone who subscribes to that theology, number one, they cannot say, I will be 100% with Jesus because of, I trust the words of Christ, chapter and verse, here they are. I have eternal life. I am sealed with the Spirit. They don't interpret it that way. They have a perseverance of the saints mentality, more of a Catholic understanding or an Arminian understanding, right? So number one, they have that. But number two, there is a love of God that, da that, that damns their own children. 
I'm giving you kind of a, a, that example, right? So if you understand that, so then when you try to love a child or a wife with that kind of love in the backdrop of your mind, right? It, it's lurking in the back. It's like, it's something, it's a pill you swallow theologically, right? How does that affect your day to day? Calvin his friends respond in the comments because, and, and again, I, I think, you know, I've met many different people flavors of reformed thought and Calvinist, you know, friends. And everyone approaches it a little differently. But this is my, this is my challenge to you. Think about this. You, you do not have a, can you say, I will 100% be with Jesus? I know it. I don't need to look at my works. You know, can that be said? And, and maybe, again, and, and, and there might be kind of a semantic discussion about that. But then second, you know, how has your view of love changed? Um, and this gets into perfect love casts out fear for there's fear, there's fear of judgment. And I think of fear. What is fear? We think of reverence, right? I think that that word can be translated Hebrew specifically as reverence, a respect, an acknowledgement, right? There's a fear of God's discipline. But this is this, the, the word fear can mean different things. I, I'm not as scared that God's gonna that God is going to send me to hell for eternal damnation because that that has been taken by Christ. I fear God based on his holiness, who he is, his justice, his discipline he might bring me, but I know he does it out of love, right? Hebrews 12 shares it. So it's seeing all these 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 concepts in harmony and connection. But the issue that I find is in a Calvinistic strain of thought. How does, um, how, how does that affect our view of God's love? So I think I'll end the video here. Many, many more things could be said. Again, I'm looking for discussion, not argument. And, I'm, and, and my thing is I would like to understand people who come from a covenant, tradi covenantal or reformed tradition more. Right. So leave comments below. Discuss that. Do I make a good point? Is there a valid? Please don't be nasty. Don't be in the arguments. You know, if, if we, we are Christians... Right? If you're going to leave a comment, right? Do it lovingly in pursuit of the truth, right? If there's a disagreement, let's try to get to those presuppositions. My presupposition is here. I interpret this verse this way. And then I'll say, okay, you know, I'll look at that verse. I'll take a look. Maybe I'm wrong. You know what I mean? So um, these are just some thoughts. Um, but yeah, I, I think that I've said everything I need to. So anyway, God bless you. I hope that this video uh, maybe challenges your thought or reveals something that you've noticed as well. If you've maybe shifted from a more lordship or Calvinistic view of, you know, the Bible to a more free grace this view, you know, that would be helpful. So anyway, um, yeah, looking forward to your responses.